All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Now, today I'm going to be showing you all, every one of you that's watching will be witnessing me displaying and talking about my entire Wilbur Smith book collection here. And there's a lot of books in this collection. It's one of my most, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this collection. It's got a lot of books. And Wilbur Smith is known for writing African adventure stories. In fact, every single one of these novels is set in Africa or around Africa or about Africa or something like that. And that is why I wore my African Lion t-shirt. It's a fierce, fierce cat. Anyway, okay, so let's talk about these books. Um, God, there's, I'm going to have to edit out a lot of that intro. But um, uh, So we, he's got several series here, three series and a bunch of standalone novels. So we will talk about the standalone novels first. I'll just kind of show them to you. Um, and then we will talk about his series up here. And um, I will go from standalone to the biggest series for last. So some of the standalone novels are just like, you know, gold. A lot of these were made into movies, by the way, back in the day, back in the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s even. Um, but there's Goldmine, you know, Elephant Song. All of these I have read, but I don't remember a whole lot about them. I read them all back when I was way younger, and I'm just rereading them for to, to review each one of them. And I think I've reviewed a couple of them now on the channel, and I'll show you the ones that I've reviewed when we get to them. Um, Hungry as the Sea. And these are all standalone adventure novels, so if you want to get a taste of Wilbur Smith with just like a short adventure. Well, they're not short adventures. They're all about 500 pages. Cry Wolf. Um, Wild Justice, Dark of the Sun, all standalones. Um, one of my favorite standalones was Sunbird, the Sunbird. I like it a lot one a lot. Um, Shout at the Devil, I remember when that one was made into a movie. It's an old time movie too. And a Motley Crue song because we got the Motley Crue guys over here. So we got to give a shout out to those guys because they shout at the devil. And Wilbur Smith wrote a book called Shout at the Devil. Great African adventure and movie. Eagle in the Sky. Eye of the Tiger. Another movie, but no, this was a Survivor song from the Rocky movie and a Wilbur Smith book. And then The Diamond Hunters. So those are his standalone novels. I don't think the standalones are as good as the series because the series have recurring characters and you get to know the characters quite a bit. Now this is the four book series. It is the um, Ballantine series of Africa, African Adventures, the Ballantine. And I just barely reviewed um, A Falcon Flies on the channel just a few weeks ago. So if you wanna watch this review, just type in my last name, Durfee, a falcon flies, and the review will magically appear upon your, uh, you know, type that into your YouTube search bar, by the way, and then um, click enter, and then the video will magically appear. Um, so this is about um, the Ballantine family. They are anti-slavers. It is set way back during the slave trade in the 1800s, and um, exactly the year 1860, yeah. And um, the Ballantines, uh, kind of their father is, there's two, there's, two, uh, there's Morris Ballantine and his, uh, his daughter, and I forgot the name of his daughter already, and Robin Ballantine. Robin and Morris Ballantine, two 20-something, they, and they go in search of their father who was lost in the African wilderness. He, he, her, their father was trying to free slaves and stop the slave trade. And anyway, that's what this series is about. It's very cool. Follows this family for four books of African adventure. And it starts with A Falcon Flies, uh, Men of Men, 
the angel weeps, and then the leopard hunts in darkness. One of my favorite novels that he's written is this first one in this series. Uh, and I remember reading it you know, when I was younger and just being amazed at how horrible the slave trade was out of Africa. And, uh, and Wilbur Smith does not flinch away from the horrors of that. Okay, now this series over here is six books long, and this is his Ancient Egypt series. This is about um, ancient Egypt, you know, the, the pharaohs, the building of the pyramids, all of that kind of time period. And, there's a, and, and they are, and these are, again, just spectacular adventure novels. And it starts with River God, one of my favorite uh, historical novels of all time. This is just, this whole series here gets you just steeped in ancient Egypt history and lore. It is so good. And then um, Seventh Scroll is the second book. And then Warlock which is one of the dopest books in the series, and it's got one of the coolest covers, too. That's just a hell of a cool cover. And then um, The Quest, and then the more recent ones, Desert God, you can see the pyramids in the background, and Pharaoh, of course. So that is his Ancient Egypt saga, which um, is absolute dynamite um and again wilbur smith does not flinch away or, or shy away from the grittiness brutality the heat the scorching raw harsh conditions of ancient egypt um i mean he lets you know that you do not want to have lived back in that time because it was brutal everybody was treated horribly you know, except for the royalty, just like in all societies. Um, and then his biggest series, and probably his most popular series, are the Courtney's of Africa. And this comprises these 13 books. And um, it goes from the, um, let's see, book one, I think, starts off in the 1600s, I believe. Yeah, 1667 with... Sir Francis Courtney and his son Hal, and this is a very interesting pirate adventure story, set in and around the Mediterranean Sea, England, um, Africa, all of that. And this Courtney family saga goes from 1600s all the way up until the modern day. So we get to know all of the adventures of this whole family as they adventure in and out of Africa through wars and turbulence and adventure and piracy and slave trade and all that but the first book is birds of prey and i did also review read and review this one on the channel about a year ago so again i told you how to find the review my last name title of the book type that into the youtube search bar push enter by god i swear to you it will show up on your screen um the second book is probably my favorite book in the series and that is monsoon again another great novel mostly set upon the turbulent seas and oceans that surround africa and then we get the blue horizon again more nautical the first part of this series does start out in the 1600s and 1700s at, with a lot of piracy a lot of pirate ships a lot of stuff on the ocean so if you're into that you'll like these and then we've got um Triumph of the Sun. And then I don't know how to pronounce this at all, but I'm assuming it's Ass a Gay. And that's not, can't, that can't be right. Ass a, a, a Gay. I don't know. I'm not even going to. The more I try, the worse it sounds, and the more I'm going to get myself in trouble. Okay. Um, and then we've got uh, When the Lion Feeds. Sound of Thunder. You can see by the cannons, we're getting a little bit more into Civil War era stuff. But over in Africa, um, A Sparrow Falls. The Burning Shore. I think around these, I think about this time with the Burning Shore and, and the power of the sword, 
where um, somewhere in the uh, about World War One ish era of the um, Africa and England and stuff like that. And then we've got Rage. And then um, some more modern stuff. Because you can see the little airplanes are more modern here. Uh, Time to Die. And then um, Golden Fox rounds out the whole series. 13 books of the Courtney's of Africa. Probably his most famous series. Um, the Ancient Egypt series is probably his most recent work. These are what he kind of published the most recently. Um, and then a lot of this stuff back down here was written literally in the 1950s, 60s, 70s. I mean, the guy is still alive. I think he's like a close to 100, but he's still alive. Uh, he cranked... Now, there are still Wilbur Smith books being published, but they're kind of like the Tom Clancy books where they're... Um, let me see. Where, you know, it's Tom Clancy, but then written by someone else. That's the last about 10 Wilbur Smith books to come out have been like this. And um, I don't ha own them. I don't own them. I don't have them. I, I like... Uh, I like Wilbur Smith's writing for what it is, and I just didn't... Uh, unlike the... Well, I like Tom Clancy, too, but I collect all... Of... Anyway, I can't justify anything I do, really. I mean, not, none, of, none of my life makes sense. I don't know why I collect the Tom Clancy books when clearly Tom Clancy's been dead for a long time, and they're still producing them. Yet, I don't co continue to collect Wilbur Smith books, um, even though someone else is writing them. I, I don't... I can't explain any of it. Can't explain it. That's why the cat is so mad on my t-shirt. 